yes, I got my hands on a brand new Asus Sonar Phoebus. And this time it's not the solo version, no, it's the one with the large volume knob. So let's take it away for part two of the review of the Asus Sonar Phoebus. Now, as you may have guessed, I now have two Asus Sonar Phoebus sound cards because, well, I found one secondhand as usual online. And this time it came with a box and inside the box, it also had the large volume knob, which is this one, which is really neat because you can put it on your desk and increase and decrease your volume, attach your microphone and whatever you may want to have. So it's nice that it has that feature. But this video isn't about the volume knob that may be a complete new video in a well distant future i wanted to say near future but i've got so many ideas besides that i now have two asus xonar phoebus sound cards and i ran through all the paces i did the listening sessions i did the uh, right mark analyzed results but before we go there i'm not going to do a complete introduction as i did in part one if you want to know everything about the sound card watch part one of the video and then come back if you want to have a small re carb cap about well what's on the sound card stay tuned because we're going to go to the specifications this sound card has the excellent burr brown pcm 1796 digital to analog converters one of the best digital analog converters out there there are several on the card one is used for the headset one is used for the front speakers for the rear, side, center and subwoofer, another digital to analog converter is used. A much more, much more well, cheaper version or a cheaper or more cost effective version. <laughs> the analog to digital converter is the CS5381, which is sort of standard. Nothing exciting going on there. There's also a headphone amplifier in the form of the Texas Instruments TPA6120A, a great amplifier. And now the card is also able to drive headphones as high as 600 ohms. So overall the components used are well rather good. They're not the best out there. Okay, except for the Burr Brown and maybe the TPA, but still these are very capable components. So the results in the first version or part one of this video sort of confused me. How can components that were this good give such confusing results? The listening sessions were a lot better. I mean, it wasn't like anything like the 8-bit sound that I heard in the previous version of this video. Um, it was uh, still a bit messy, but I was able to place all the instruments, so the sound staging was a lot better. Still not the best I have heard, but it was at least better than the previous sound card or the broken sound card. As for the overall sound quality, um, I was starting to think, is there something wrong with my test bench? So I switched computers. I thankfully I have a couple of them around here, but still the, the messy sound was still there. Um, the highs were there, the middles were there. The bass was a bit lagging. It wasn't really there, uh, but that's maybe due to be it being a gamer sound card and gamers tend to prefer sound cards that are a bit more higher and don't have a lot of bass going on because you can hear footsteps a lot better. So overall, I still wasn't that impressed by this sound card. It was better than the broken one, but still, it could have been better. And these are the results that Reitmark gave in the very first video. You can see the immense gap in the volume of the right and the left channel. That's something that you just do not want to see. And it also is the reason why I thought that the card was broken. And these are the results that Widemark gave with the new card. Now there's almost no difference in the score, but thankfully the gap in the volumes is a lot smaller. It's still not where I want it to be, but okay. The card itself gets an average, something that you shouldn't be proud of. So this made me wonder, is the card broken? Is my test bench broken? Well, I've eliminated both of those. Uh, the only thing that is true is that this is, well, not the best sound card out there.
And now for my conclusion, what do I think about the Asus Xonar Phoebus? Well, sadly, I just cannot recommend this sound card. I mean, it's a nice sound card. It looks cool. It has really good components, but the audio results, they're just not that, that good. I just not, I'm just not impressed. It's really strange because the components used are, it's not even C class or B, it's, it's really A to B class components that they're using. Um, so I just cannot understand why these results are so crappy. Uh, I thought it was the sound card that I had, that it was broken, which it wasn't, because now I now have a second sound card and it produces sort of similar results. Also, the listening sessions were sort of, well, the same. It was a bit better, but not by a lot. So I thought it was the test bench. So I used another test bench, but that was also not the issue because they gave exactly the same results. So I just can make one conclusion, and that is that the Asus Xonar Phoebus isn't a really good sound card. No, it's just a bad sound card. Just, just say it out. It's a really bad sound card. So with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I'd like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.